Peganish. The Riki uh, mushrooms. And I'm like, oh, we need to get those, right? Like the yeah, year I before, the, the year before that was like oyster mushrooms. The year before that it was like uh, polenta, something like that. Like every year we're like learning different things. Like so, that's the beauty of this, and that's also the challenge of this, right? Like alternative yes. living, alternative eating, alternative things. So salute to everybody that's <laughs> on it. You know what I'm saying? Like let me go back to cooking because I, I can ramble. Keep looking because I made a video and I couldn't put it up because in the whole time video I kept saying, "What? Well, what did I keep saying?" It was oh, which one? What video? What's the stuff that I made? And I was like, "Oh, this is, isn't it barley? It's not barley, right?" Is it barley? No. Well, what was it? I was calling it barley, but it's bulgur wheat. Oh, bulgur wheat. So the whole thing, the I made a whole video for Hold you guys on. cooking. But what I thought was barley, so I was like, "Oh, barley is a good substitute for like oatmeal or like a um, a breakfast thing." Um, what's the other thing that you got? Like porridge. So it's like a good thing for that, but it's bulgur wheat. So I never put the video up because <laughs> I was calling it the wrong thing. So always learning, always adjusting. Um, I'm not grabbing it for you guys, but I'm gonna go and answer some of you guys' questions. Um, spill the tea, gallon gang. Yay, gallon gang for sure. That needs to be on a shirt. Um, also, why we guys have you guys on here? Because um, what would you like? What what's a quote, or what would you like um, a shirt to say for you completing a challenge? Just yeah, for next pick, year. Curious to pick your mind. Um, you so me? this right here is the bulgur wheat, right? You can get this at Bob Red Mills. It's pretty awesome. Right. It does come out kind of mushy when you make it, but you can make it in so many different ways. And you can it's like polenta. Polenta can be fried and we cook it like grits. So go, yeah. there goes that. Right. I like the and this polenta. is this is um, fino, fino, fonio, fonio right. I it's it's a it's a grain. It's really fine, but it fluffs up so good. Like and this has like so much protein and so many like if you it's F-O-N-I-O. -O, right. Fonio. Um, fonio. Um, we got this at the at the foods, uh, the food. The food business, what was it? The we went to somewhere in New York where it's like thousands of big businesses worldwide. It was and, like specialty food. Yeah, foods, specialty food. Go ahead. Food tour. Yeah, yeah. Like That's it's like that. annual. It's in New York. It's at this big building in New York, right? This is us learning about different stuff. And let me tell you, when we went there, we met so many different people. And these people had their own brand and they were like yeah, we sell this. This is what yeah. we sell. They had a booth and they were like, You can cook this with everything. We found so, vegan everything. Yeah, there. vegan it was everything. awesome. Um because of COVID, they had to like online this year, which I think is whack, but whatever. It wasn't whack. Um, <laughs> um, what was your hardest challenge for you, Kyle? Yes, nutrition was big for me. Yes, we want to learn more about nutrition. I feel like um, that is something should. that we got everybody's lacking. That we got a, a we do have a nutrition right. class that we'll let you guys know about. Um, we got a nutrition class that's out right now. I posted it in a group. It goes over a few of the basic things, especially because we're transitioning. But what it doesn't cover and what I want to make sure that I put in there, and that's what I'm going to put to, to kind of get it all the way great, is uh, nutritional facts. So I just want you to understand like yes. different foods and different nutritional fats. And then I want to update some of the things like the spices and like some of the different superfoods. I just want to make like a presentation for that. But other than that, we have the course ready for you already, a basic understanding of been what working is on a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're on it. Um, Kyle says, what do you find yourself craving that you shouldn't have? So in the beginning for me, it was really hard because, you know, I was eating Oreos like nobody's business. <laughs> So I think the sugar was really hard for me. But after like the second week, I always don't really have an issue with the cravings. The way that I do suffice is that um, I eat a lot of um, nuts. So you know, I got my pistachios, pistachios, almonds. That's how I get through. Like if I find myself like, oh, I want something like something to snack on. It doesn't even have to be sugar wise now because, you know, we're five weeks in. But when I want something to snack on, I just grab a handful of nuts and literally that works for me or I make a smoothie. So, you know, I'm usually drinking one or two smoothies a day. I'm probably going to start drinking like three smoothies a day, especially by next week because really try to push yourself for those five days. Really try to do like all liquid, all salad throughout the day. Um, so I just made myself another smoothie. And yeah, I survive off of um, nuts. 
when I'm craving something. Because I think, like, when you're craving something, you just want to have, like, that eating. It's almost like a, a smoker. Like, you're not even addicted to smoking. You just want to have that, like, that push what? This power button. I'm sorry. On your phone? On that camera. On your phone? No, that's it. I'm not kidding. Um, so... I think you just want to have the feeling of like the chewing so you just have to find something healthy that works for you but um pretty much after the second week i haven't had any issues with the sugar i was still wanting like oh like cookies or yeah cookies are like my go-to cookies and ice cream and um haven't really had that and i'm feeling pretty good about that um i feel like for myself yeah I really haven't had any issues since the second week. And I always feel like that every year that I do the challenge. So um, what about yourself, Lamont? Any cravings that sh or something you want to eat that she shouldn't be eating? Um, So for me, I think it's oil. I know that I eat a lot of good oil, but I think it's oil that I'd be craving because I like a lot of fried vegan fast food. Like that's my go-to. That's what it because I cook for the house, I cook for everybody. So like most of my quick foods are like something fried, something with bread. So I take out the bread on purpose. I like that. But um, other than taking out the bread, oh, bread. Um, I think about bread. well, because That's good, but we so. learned to substitute for bread. So substitute for bread is like corn. So now we use like corn chips. We was using lettuce. That's why we made the lettuce burger wraps. Um, really like we too. make bowls when we put it on top of the king quinoa, yeah. right? Like so different stuff like that helps substitute the bread. But the oil, like. I think last night I used some um, avocado oil, but I used so much because we made some um, falafels. And um, I mean, when we first started, I would still use vegetable oil to do that, right? Um, either way, you're trying to reduce the amount of oil that you put into your body in general just to kind of regroup. The whole point of this is to kind of like reset yourself because you're not new in the mucus challenge. You're resetting yourself so that you can yeah. get to the next level but if you keep putting little things in there you keep attempting little things it's not going to really reset you but if you eat or you do things in a way bigger way like if you already eat meat all the time and now you just did 40 days of no meat then you're winning if you eat milk all the time and now you're not eating milk you're winning if you don't drink this much water and now all of a sudden you don't put this much water in your body you are winning you're from us doing this you are increasing so much uh intake with your your vegetables and different things like that i think that that's really helpful, and I think that's that's kind of where um, I become more aware of what's not working and what is working. So for me, again, the piggyback or the veggie back uh, to what I was saying at the beginning, it's the oils for me. You know, I want to fry stuff. I want, the air fryer is good, and I'm glad we got that last year. See, that's what I'm saying. Every year we're leveling up, changing something, because it was harder yeah, before when we didn't have the air true. fryer. Now that we have the air fryer, it's like, woohoo! I don't have to fry certain things, like, because you want that. It's a texture for me, right? I'm trying to get the right texture. It's not because yeah. I'm really looking for the oil, but it's how things cook a certain way when they are fried or they are kind of put into different oil, you know, like that. So I can tell you what I'm tired of. What? Rice. Oh, yeah. I'm tired of rice. Wild rice, though. Or and black rice. What rice are no, you No, I don't know. Like I general. love rice, but usually we eat a lot of jasmine rice, and then you're not supposed to eat white rice during the challenge. So oh, yeah. usually I don't have an issue with it. I feel like we always do good with the quinoa, wild rice, and black rice. But I feel like this year we've eaten it every little, every single day the since rice? the challenge. <laughs> Baby's up. All right, okay. <sighs> um, they had asked a couple more questions. And then, you know... That baby get up. Like, she be like, we try, We were looking at the thing where you can put the gates around the bed. Like, <laughs> it gets real. Um, I'm cooking, so this is not going to stay too long. Let me see what the 